Hello everyone, this is Vicki Verley and I'm going to do a short video on uh, some common problems that I see on YouTube all the time. And the first one is uh, your volume. Like say you've uh, completed your video, it turned out perfect, and the volume, the audio volume is very low. Well, and every program does contain, in the volume, there's always going to be these little lines. It's it, it, and You can turn the volume, usually it's more to turn the volume down. It, you usually can't turn the volume up anymore. But your video is not for all for lost here. What you can do is just duplicate the the, um, the, the video. And therefore you're going to have two things of audio. So I'm going to show you how to do it in two different uh, or three different programs. Let's start with Windows Movie Maker, which I never used this, but I, I went ahead and, and looked at it. I've got a little clip here called Birds. So I'm going to start from scratch. I have this in, imported media in my library here. I'm going to drag media here like it says. So it's video. And if you open it up, I have it, well, it's closed. Now, if you open it up over here, let me, let's go over a little so you can really see. There's a plus and minus. It shows up like this, but if you do that plus thing, it shows that there is an audio here. Now, I wasn't able to find how to make another video track, but what I did find is if you take this movie, which is called Birds, there is, if you notice over here, there is an audio music. You can just drag it down here, line it up all the way flush left. And as you can see, now you've got two audios, so it's going to be twice as loud. I mean, it's not the optimum thing that you want to do it, but that's one way to do it. So you don't, you don't have to waste your whole, uh, your whole video. You can do, you know, you double it. And then um, how you do it in Flash uh, is it's a little different. In Flash, like I have it set up over here, you can see that um, audio. I have it as a, uh, a layer. I, I would just create another layer. Um, I'm going to name it double click on here and I'm going to name it audio 2 audio 2 and then I'm going to grab this audio out of my uh, I don't even know if it's the right one it really doesn't matter because I'm not going to use, <laughs> I'm not going to use it I can drag it onto audio 2 oh excuse me you have to uh, in flash you highlight the keyframe and drag it onto the stage excuse me drag it onto the stage and it pops in there. It's not quite the same thing, but you just make sure it is the same thing. I I, I just opened this pos this uh, project just to have something to work with, and, and it should look the same. Like line up the bumps of the you know the audio visual representation of the audio like it does here. See how they they line up just the same, and then there's a break here if you can see, and then it lines up just the same. And then you sh you would ov obviously play it back too to make sure. Uh, what I use primarily um, is I use um, excuse me I use um, Adobe Premiere. Now, I don't have Adobe Premiere on this uh, computer, so I just did some screenshots to show you. Um, pull over here. So here I've got where I've got this video here, and what it does, what Adobe Premiere does, it goes uh, puts the video and the audio right below it, and it, you can do multiple, and you can add more too. But it, it, the default sets you up with one, two, three videos. So this is in video two, and then it puts the audio automatically in audio two, and then I think the next one will show. Yeah, see, I I just dragged it out there again, lined it up, and then you've doubled your audio again. It doubled your video too, but that really doesn't matter because it's uh, it's just going to overlap and show the same thing. But you've doubled your audio, and then here you kind of can see they all have these lines usually. Let me try to zoom in. So if you want to do, I did other videos about uh, custom fadeouts and stuff, but do you see this yellow line? You would grab that, and you can move it down, but you can't move it up. But you can move it down if it's too loud, and that's another way to adjust uh, audio. Um, and I already did the flash. Now, th so that's a very common problem. So that's number. That's the first thing that I've addressed. If you have this problem, you, your audio is not loud enough. Just double it up, and then you're going to have twice the volume. Sometimes you're going to get a little bit of, uh, you know maybe a little bit of noise, background noise, but instead of trashing the whole video, that'll save you a lot of time. Now the second thing that I find all the time, and maybe some people don't even hear it, but I hear it all the time, and there's like some people I won't even watch their videos. There's people that I love the, the information, but I just can't stand. There'll be this swirling, this swirling flanging, and it's just so faint, it's in this high echelon. And what that says is you have compressed, you've over-compressed the audio in your video. So I, I'm going to just stay here with, we'll start with Adobe uh, Premiere on this one. 
Uh, so here's what you do, how you access it. it it's in the, uh, it's always going to be in your export or your finished product. You know, it's what, it's, it comes in the export. And what's happening is you want to have less compression in the audio. You want to have a, up your quality. So I did a, some screenshots. Here we go. Uh, in Adobe Premiere. Okay, here's the first one. And then you go, um, over here you're going to go File, Export, and then Media. Okay, and then next screenshot. That's going to bring up this dialog box. And these are all, there's all sorts of things you can do. And here, where they are, they're here. There's these tabs. And, and by default, I think the video tab comes to the front. You know, and I've got it at uh, 1080 by uh, 720, so it's HD. That's one of the lower HD. And it, you have all this, you know, compression settings. You know, there's lots of variables. But to the right of the video, there's tabs here. And you click on the audio, and I believe I have that in the next Scott yet, audio. So first of all, you want to, one way to do it is just set your audio uh, to high. And then secondly is frequency. So 48 kilohertz is the max. You want to have it set to that 48 kilohertz. That way you're going to have the maximum uh, audio and you're not going to get that swirly, flangey uh, thing on the export. Uh, in Flash it's similar. I, I can do it live on Flash. I see I don't have Adobe Premiere installed on my desktop computer, so I had to do screenshots from the uh, laptop. But let's come over here in Flash. Um, and, and see, the thing is... Why you had to have it so small in the old days was because of YouTube was only, there was limits. But now I think there's like no limit on YouTube. You can have very large files. Okay, so we're going to go File, and then and it's Publish. Or you could just, uh, again, just hit F12. Publish. Oh, shoot. Cancel. That's not what I want to do. Yes, I want to cancel. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Export, not Publish. Export, and then you have the option of Export Image or Export Movie. You want to say Export Movie. And then I'm just going to name it, uh, you know, whatever, MMM, because it'll be deleted or not even. And as file type, QuickTime Movie, okay? Then you say Save. Then there's going to be another dialog box with all this stuff. So I've got it as, you know, 1080 by 720. I have it after time elapsed, but that's not the point here. Let's go over here and go QuickTime Settings. That's going to bring up more options. And you have Video, and then you have sound. I already have it set real high, but I'm going to go in there anyway just to show you guys. So you hit settings. And again, it's the kilohertz, you know, and the compression. I have it as none. Okay, and I have it as 16-bit stereo. I mean, you can go mono or, you know, you can mess around with that, but I always go for the max. I go for the best audio quality. See, if you come under here, well, actually 48 would be the max. I, I could change it to 48 and say okay. But you have this pull down next to rate. And again, you want to go with the the higher rate. And you you know you're going to have to test these before you upload them. Listen to them. I'm just going to cancel out of this. But then you would say okay and go on to the next thing. Um, the third thing now, Windows Movie Maker, you don't really have a lot of choices. I saw there. It's over here. You have Publish to this computer, which is going to publishes your movie to a computer as a video file. This is going to be like a real small file, DVD. You can hit that, which is going to be better quality, but it's going to be these weird uh, things. Uh, I forget what they are, but they're weird. They're not a uh, recordable CD. You could do that, I guess. Email, which is going to be even smaller than this computer. Digital video camera. So I'm going to say um, this computer. And then, okay, it says publish to, and then browse. You find your thing, and then you go down to next. Oops, excuse me. Let's, let's make sure we can see this. You have another dialog. Publish movie dialog, dialog box. Publish to, blah, blah, blah. And then next. Now, the standard is best quality for playback on my computer, recommended. Oops. Let me just stop jiggling this thing around for you. So it, the standard is, let's pull this down where you can see it. You know, best quality for, for playback on my computer, in parentheses, recommended. Uh, but if you've done that and it's coming out funky and you're hearing that swirly flangey stuff, then you could either check, there's other things here. You can, the radio buttons, you can check compress too. And you could up the file size, but more so, I would go to more settings here. And the, this default is DV-AVI-NTSC. And NTSC, I think that's that weird thing that, that comes up as uh, if you do DVD. Um, this is fine. This comes out to be fine, but um, there's more options in here. So I would maybe go to this Windows Media HD, you know, uh, MP, this is uh, megabytes per second. 
I haven't messed around with this and I really don't use it that often, but if you do, this is your only that I could find. This is the only thing. They don't have a specific audio um, thing in there. So uh, if you're having that problem, I would you know not do the best for my computer thing. I would go to more settings. And I would go to the max uh, thing, the HD with the seven, you know, seven point eight here. Well, I would try each of them, and you know, try some of the higher settings and see if it sounds any better. I mean, this is pretty much very simplistic. You don't have a lot of options here, and you know, obviously, it'd be better if you had a better. I'm going to cancel out of this if you had some better software. But if you don't, and this is all you have to work with, you still do have some options. Okay, so there's a couple little things that may hope helped you out as far as. Um, problems that come up with uh, YouTube videos because you know you can have a great video and then if the audio is ruined for me it's just ruined and, and I just can't I won't listen to it I'll turn it off you know I just will not listen to it and there's one person in particular I really liked her astrology forecast but she's got that high-pitched squirreling flanging in those videos and I, I just can't listen to it anymore I, I just can't handle it some people maybe don't even hear it but I definitely hear it and it's very bothersome so you want to set your um, the reason we had these real low settings is was in the beginning of the internet, in the beginning of video, you know, you, the computers weren't set up to handle it. Now we we can definitely handle it, and we can go with the higher options. I would always go with the very top uh, options for the 48 kilohertz seems to be the the highest on both Flash and uh, Premiere, and you know, audio, audio quality as high as you can get it because it really does make a difference, and it can make or break your video. Okay, well, this is Vicki Vertley. I hope I helped you out, and I'll talk to you soon.